up to the mirror and today I'm going to show you how to make a pretty simple YouTube background um, with only using Photoshop CS5 and a couple of renders from the internet. So basically what you're going to do is first you're going to download the template I provide in the description. Um, I also provide the link to the guy who uh, provided the template to me and uh, you should go check him out as well. So the template's pretty simple, you're just going to click on it, it's a .ps D file and uh, it'll open up this. Now first I always like to just give him, give myself a little more room by doing that but you don't really need to. And so the first thing I really like to do is go to layer and new and then go new layer and we're just going to name this gradient. You don't really need to, whoops, I spelled gradient wrong. You don't really need to name it that but you can if you want. And so there's your, your gradient layer and you're going to go over to the gradient tool and I'm going to choose a lime green kind of color right there. You can obviously change it by using the arrows and whatever. You know how to use that. And you can just basically draw the line to whatever kind of gradient you want. And now that that's done right there, we're going to click overlay. And that makes a very cool kind of uh, lime green effect kind of thing. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add simple text. So let's see here. Sorry, it's loading. I might be a little slow just because I'm using screen flow, but uh, I'm just going to do TTG Productions, and we're just going to go with the regular. And we're going to go with Lime Green right now, I believe. So, yep, uh, let's make it a little brighter than that. You can just basically choose whatever colors you want, and that's where I'm leaving some creative license for you guys. So you can basically kind of do whatever kind of text you want and stuff like that. And so now what you're going to do is you're going to highlight it. You don't need to highlight it, but you can if you want. Um, then you go to Edit, Transform, and you're going to rotate uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then I'm going to click on your arrow tool, pointer thing, whatever, and drag it over here. I'm going to go back to my text tool, highlight it. I'm still not too keen on the color, so let's see. Let's make it a little brighter and make it match the background a little better. Alright, so that's good for that. And we're going to make this text a little bigger by going up to the font size. And let's make it like 250 because this is pretty short. Alright, that look actually looks pretty good. And obviously, as you guys can see, you can't really see it very well. And I'm going to show you how to do that in one second, how to make it so it doesn't do that. Um, we're going to bring this down to 72 point. Um, Alright, so now it says productions on that side. And that's going to be also a new layer. And we're just going to highlight it. And go up to edit and transform. And then we're going to rotate this one 90 degrees clockwise. Alright. And so now we're just going to put that there, and I'm going to edit the size of it just to make it a little bigger and easier to read. Um, but you don't really need to. Um, let's see here. We'll make it 152. Uh, it's a little big. We'll go 122. All right, so that looks pretty darn good. Uh, so we're just going to choose whatever layer you want, uh, whether it be the first layer or the second layer with the text on it. We're just going to double-click on this blue area right here. And we're going to go to stroke, and we're going to add a stroke. And so now that that's done, we're going to click OK. See that has a little highlight thing there? It looks really, really nice. Then we're going to go over to Productions, do the same thing. Add a stroke, press OK, and that looks pretty good. Except for the fact that this is a little off-colored to the compared to the one before that. So we're going to... Alright, let's see here. Alright, eh, that looks a little better. I actually do like the, con the contrast. It looks pretty good. Okay, and so now we're going to get into the real uh, meat of the background, which would be the images that are on it. And we're going to go over to... F oh, yeah. So first, I guess I should show you um, that you should look for... Uh, you should go to Planet Render. Planet Render has, like, the best... Like, um, in Photoshop, you can't just import, or, like, a regular old photo. Well, you can, but you then you have to... Uh, quick select and do all kinds of stuff. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to render, uh, planetrender.net and you're going to search whatever render you want. Uh, I'm going to search for this Apple render and that's the one that I've been using. Um, so I already downloaded that. You're going to need to make an account to download it. But um, once you download it, just save it to your desktop and I'll show you exactly how you can import it into Photoshop. Alright, so to import it, you're going to go to File, Open. And then you're going to, then I have it saved in my Photoshop folder. Um, I have it as renders and images. And I'm going to actually do this one first. Uh, yeah, I'll do this one first. Um, so, okay, so see how that is like a rendered photo? So now we're just going to click Command-A, 
which selects all, and then I'm going to go over to edit and copy. Then we're going to go over here and go edit, paste. Okay, so now that that's pasted, pretty huge, um, I know. Then you're just going to click C Command T to uh, activate the transform. Then you're going to hold down Shift to resize the image. And I'm going to put the Apple logo right here. Uh, let's make it a little bigger. Put the Apple logo right there. And I'm going to also add a stroke to it. So it is like outlined. I'm sorry. Oh wait, I have to accept the transformation first. So apply transformation. Then we're going to go over to your layer, click on the blue area, and then apply the stroke so it's outlined. Alrighty. So now we're done with that. We can just exit out of that. And we're going to click open again to get your next rendered image. Um, these actually, these two images aren't actually rendered. I'm going to show you how to render them. So this is an iPhone, obviously, and we're going to go over to your quick selection tool to render them. So you're going to go right here. And I'm just going to fill in the corners so it selects it uh, very nicely. Make sure you get all the icons because sometimes those can be kind of sticky. Then you can click on the buttons and stuff to make sure you get all of it. Um, then I'm going to go to the top, click that, make sure it gets everything. And that looks pretty good for a qu oh wait, nope. Alright, that looks pretty good for a quick selection so far, I guess. Um, and then we can go, obviously, you can just go edit, copy, and then over here we can go edit, paste. Alright, so now you have this as an object, so now you can basically move it around like any other thing. And you can go over here, I'm just going to drag it right next to the productions. And obviously you can just go to Command T and then resize it by holding down Shift. But I'm going to keep it at the size it was about at, just because I do think it looks pretty nice. We're going to apply the transformation. Alright, so now we're going to go on to the hardest part of the background, which is your middle piece. You don't actually have to have a middle piece, but I do like to have it because it looks very cool. Alright, so we're going to go to Open, and then here's the middle piece that I chose. I'm going to choose an Apple MacBook Pro laptop, and uh, you can get this image off of Google, whatever. Um, and you're going to click Open. Alright, so here's where it kind of gets tough. You're going to go here, and this is where the quick selection really comes in handy with Photoshop CS5. Um, I'm going to select, I'm going to try to quick select the entire laptop. Alright, and so once you are done quick selecting, um, you're going to make sure you get all the corners and stuff. Uh, and sometimes this can get a little tedious, but it's alright because it looks really cool once you're done and I'll show you why. Alright, so obviously you're going to make sure everything is quick selected. You're going to go to edit, copy, um, and then paste. Alright, so now you have it as an object and I'm going to put it right in the middle there so it's visible on my channel. Again, Command T, Shift, Resize, and I'm going to put it right in the middle as an object. I'm going to move it a little bit up so it doesn't interfere with my channel uh, other cool channels tab and I want to click apply transformation and now what I'm going to do is go edit I mean file open go to desktop Photoshop and I'm going to import my channel logo which is a J which is a JPEG file command A to select it all copy and then I'm going to um, paste all right so now that's a huge thing so again, we're going to click Command T to resize, hold down Shift, resize it, and we're going to bring it over to where my computer is, over here. Apply transformation, and we're going to move it over as an object. Then we're going to go over here and go to like a 200-ish 200, um, 200 uh, percent zoomed. And we're going to, again, Command T to resize, Shift so, uh, to keep it in the aspect ratio. I want to drag it to the middle of the screen, and let's see here. All right, so now we're just going to make it fit on the screen so it looks like it's on the screen. And that is pretty cool. Um, alrighty, so now that that's done, click Apply Transformations. Now you can zoom back out to your 50% or whatever. Um, now we can add brushes and stuff like that. But I'm not going to uh, because I actually don't really like brushes on my backgrounds. I think they look kind of corny. But um, I'm going to show you exactly 
how to export it because some people have issues with the file being too big. So now we're going to go over to File, Save As. We're going to go to Background. Uh, we're going to save it as a JPEG. And we're going to save the file as, I don't know, let's go YouTube Demo BG. And we're going to save it as a JPEG, obviously, to the desktop. Click Save. And the thing is, YouTube only uh, accepts... Uh, Files that are under 256k. Um, so I want to. This file right here is 180.6k, which means we can move the file quality up a little bit. So we're going to go over to high, and see how that's 209k. And uh, nine and ten. I mean, eight is high, and then ten is best. Um, I know I think 12 is best, but I think nine will do for now. Okay, so 238.8k. Let's see if we can get it up to 10. Nope, so see how that's 284.8k. YouTube will only accept 256k, so we're going to go to 9. And that is pretty good. Um, and obviously I'm just going to show you guys how to upload it to YouTube. Just go into your web browser. Um, go to YouTube, my channel. And then we're going to go to settings. Oh, sorry, themes and colors, new theme. I'm going to delete the old one. Then we're going to go YouTube demo bg.jpg. And it will load. And now it is done. There is your new background. Um, obviously, my screen's a little bit condensed, but you can kind of view it there. Looks really cool. And uh, yeah. So uh, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. And if this helped you at all, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. It really, really helps me keep doing what I'm doing. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I, this has been Tim. I'm signing out.